Hello, uh, I'm Luca Mugnaini. Um, I am known as uh, Luca Mag in uh, Slack, the Elm Slack community, and uh, I'm a front-end engineer at uh, Rakuten in Tokyo. We already had a, a quick introduction. Um, Rakuten started 20 years ago as an e-commerce company in, uh, in Japan. We are very big in Japan, and uh, now we are <laughs> very big in Japan. And uh, we are now uh, working on uh, letting our brand be known also outside. Maybe you are familiar with some of those brands. We are now in 30 countries and uh, we have more than, uh, than 70 services. But the story started in... Uh, oh, we are also sponsor of um, Barcelona uh, football team and the Golden State Warriors for who are passionate about sports. So the story actually started in, uh, in Germany, in Berlin. Uh, two years ago, I was working there, and I was uh, uh, making a website for UK and Spain. They were um, not really marketplace, a bit smaller, and we have a very tight deadline, so we were uh, working using uh, um, JavaScript and CSS. So there is the website I was making, and here is the CSS tricks, is a website that it was very important at that time to learn a lot of CSS tricks. And things went well. We were able to, um, to publish this on time. But after that, we started having problems. Uh, you know, fixing bugs was difficult. Adding a new feature was also difficult. So we started to uh, enforce uh, on us some discipline, and uh, we were uh, rebuilding everything, trying to you know, write pure function. And then this article came out, like introduction to the Elm architecture. And then when I read it, I said, this is it. This is the way we, we should go. So then I started to uh, think, how can we introduce Elm uh, at work? Um, a new project came out, and it was the, the redesign of the entire German marketplace. So we said, oh, this is it. It's, it's a chance to to move ahead with, uh, with Elm. So in a couple of months, we come out with the first proof of con concept, that is this one. It was pretty cool. It was able to, uh, you know, selecting product and in real time uh, telling the user what was available and what was not. Uh, in the previous version, every click would uh, require, you know, an HTTP request and most of the time, the system will tell you after a few seconds, oh, sorry, this product is not available. So we were very happy. But then, and this was the advice that it was well known already at that time, so introduce Elm gradually. But we kind of ignore it. We say, no, no, we don't need to, to do that. Let, let's go full in, you know, the entire marketplace in, in Germany. Let's replace it. And then some people start having a concern, um, SEO concern, people coming to me and says, but wait a moment, the Elm is 0 0.17? Are you sure you want to use it? And it's, it's not famous? And, and there was actually a uh, technical issue. So um, people around us were not understanding what is Elm. And uh, it was also our fault. You know, we failed in communicating this. And eventually, it's true that uh, we started too big. So uh, this project failed, uh, it's never, it was never published. Then I moved to Japan. So I changed the department and I moved to what is called the ecosystem. And in this department, we are in charge of uh, registration, authentication and payments. So we have no SEO concern. And the words, at the time I arrived, there was already a transition um, from Java to Kotlin. So there was a high consideration of, for functional programming. And I think this was the key. So I started small this time. So they, there was an idea of uh, making a tool, and then I show what we could build. And I make this little editor where you can customize the application for the, the company of our group, where they could go there. And they could also see how it would work uh, on the mobile and on the desktop. And uh, people like this prototype, so it became very popular. And, uh, and I had allies in the department that knew uh, functional programming. 
and it was a flexible environment after all. So those for me were the, the key of success and since then we started using Elm. So the rest of the talk, I will, I'm going to share some of the ideas and the solutions that we find in this year of using uh, Elm. So these are the things that I'm, I'm going to, to discuss. We can start from a, a simple one, static pages. So this actually happened lately. Um, we, we need to build a, a static page. And uh, you know, once you are in Elm, you kind of don't want back to, to write HTML or, or CSS. So we said, why we cannot use Elm also for writing a, a single, a simple static page? So we have this idea of uh, um, writing the HTML and putting all the text in there. And then with a simple function, extracting all the data, all the text and passing to Elm uh, as a flag. So here you can see the result. On the left side is Elm running. So you have a fully responsive, uh, responsive page. And in case JavaScript is disabled, you still have a, a page with a minimal CSS actually for styling. So this will be completely friendly with any uh, search engine also that don't use uh, JavaScript. Another thing is we want to have a system to be able to write applications that are um, compliant to the guidelines. So we want to use uh, Elm UI because we don't want to deal with, um, with the tricks, CSS tricks anymore. We were tired. But we, were, we, we need something there that will help us to, to, to implement the guidelines. So we, we decided to use a style framework that is a library that I published a while ago that is a layer on top of Elm UI. And then on top of that, we build another layer for uh, specific for, for, uh, for Rakuten. So these are, you can see here what's the concept. So with Elm UI, you will get on the left, uh, simple input field like that. On the right, using style framework, adding some more argument and using some modifier, you will get a more advanced version of the, of the input field. Another thing is that this library can be customized. So there you can see how we store all our data. And uh, these are possible other versions of other companies using the same system. And there is also easy copy and, and paste code there that you can grab. So you can get the logo and all other components in your application easily. Another thing we want to do, so we have many companies in the group. But we want to, and, and all of them use a different system for a login and, and authentication. So we want to be able to unify the system. But we want to also do in a simpler way possible. So we introduced the concept of widgets that can be used independently or together and can just adapt and run on top of existing website with a minimal effort. So this is an example of a page that uh, has a three widget running at the same time. And uh, as you can see, you have a three explore history. Uh, Elm allowed you to do that. And uh, uh, fun fact, usually those explore history, they will be overlap one on top of the other. So at the beginning, we didn't know where, what was going on. So we created this little script that basically take them and will move on the, on the left side. This is a way that they can be combined single one by one, combined together, or using a, a main function. So this gives us a lot of flexibility. Here is uh, how, for example, you can load those widgets from, uh, from a website. You just put uh, a snippet, you just load the, the JavaScript, and the Elm is just running on that page, plus a bit of configuration. Then we need to test the scenario. Uh, so we have a quite complex flow even for a simple login or registration. Um, and we, we want to keep using a very lean development environment. So we, we use Elm Live and we try to, to, to stay on Elm Live. Elm Live is a very simple server uh, that just uh, keep watching uh, your files and when you save it, when you change them, just to recompile. Um, so we create a kind of a custom debugger that you see uh, on the left. And we have a list of scenarios. So those are all the things that can happen uh, in this situation. Um, this is how it works. 
So you can click of any of those cases, and then you click Next, and they, you can ch check the interface, you can check the error messages. It's very simple. Um, the thing is, Elm UI uh, always, so how do we do this? We, so we, first of all, we store all the possible responses in the JSON uh, files in a folder. Those files, they, they don't, don't contain only the body of the response, they contain the entire response, including the metadata, the header, and so on. Um, then we let Elm Live to read those files, but Elm Live will always answer 200 because they all are successful. So how can we simulate all possible state of the response? To do so, uh, we have a simple script that check if the response is actually just a body or it contain metadata. If it's contained metadata, the script will extract the inner response and we use that as a response. So we, in that way, we can simulate, for example, a 401 or 404, any type of state. This is how we store the scenario inside our code. And uh, the, so the list is automatically generated. And uh, one of the benefits is that uh, you can get the entire list of the old scenario of your application, and then you can use for documentation, or you can pass to the QA team, for example, for, run, for them to run their test. So the documentation is always up to date and uh, always synchronized. This is an important concept for us because uh, eventually we have to write a lot of documentation, so the most we automate the system and, and the better it is. Um, lately, we, we release uh, uh, in the open source one uh, package because we, we need to have also, we, we modify uh, the um, official Elm HTTP uh, library because, w for example, we need to access always the header because we use token. So even if the, um, the reply fail, we need to know what was the token in the header. So we modify it slightly and then we we put together with the previous uh, boxed kind of things, and together also with another one, and we release in the open source. Um, actually, it's interesting because uh, we didn't publish in the own package repository because we were not sure that this is like the, still in, in a good shape. And probably after listening to Richard talk, maybe we will never do at this point. <laughs> But please, uh, have a look. You can use as it is, or you can actually just copy and paste in your code or just take inspiration from, from this one. A little things, we write the multi-language website. So we create uh, uh, a little trick. Uh, you can switch languages. We have those buttons. And we also have a key, what we call it a key language that basically it replaces all the translation with the key, how we store them in our record. So we can easily, for example, uh, search in our code base to identify which code is um, generating that part of the interface. Because if you, of course, if you search for the translation, you will always hit the file that contains all the translation. And then there you will find a key, and then with the key you have to search in the code. And the, what we call it the lollipop, it's a, is another trick that we use to detect if some lazy developer hard-coded a text in the code. For example, there the, the error message is hard-coded. Probably it was me, I don't know. And, and so you, you can visually see everything has to be a lollipop. If something is not a lollipop, something is wrong. Um, so, w when I started one year ago, I was the only person who was doing Elm, and I was actually the only front-end engineer in the department, and there were like hundreds of back-end engineers. So, the, f the, the fastest way for us was to move people from back-end to front-end. So, we want to build a, a friendly environment for back-end engineer. And when I say friendly, I mean, in this case, without HTML, CSS, and, and JavaScript because that, uh, we, we thought that would, would make easier for back-end engineer to transition. G JavaScript was covered by Elm, 
And then for the HTML and CSS part, we were using Elm UI. That is a, a layer on top of a, uh, on top of CSS, basically. So we did that, and we were uh, running a training session, and we did a lot of pair programming. So this is an example of a, uh, of a training material that we use in uh, in Rakuten. Uh, I like the you know to to try to communicate the idea that uh, in Elm we are working in a safe area, so we only write pure function. Actually, we only write two functions. One is the update and one, one is the view. And then there is the Elm runtime that is protecting us for the unsafe area. And uh, there are also um, simple animation that show the cycle that is happening internally in Elm uh, during the life of the, uh, of the application. So, I guess you're familiar with this system, but uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was very effective to, to explain. So after one year, we have now 10 engineers writing in Elm, and uh, 12 interns learn it. And um, we have at the moment a eight project. So people, of course, are st struggling in shifting to, to Elm. One is uh, you know, changing the paradigm. Most of them are Java or Kotlin developer. Um, complain are about limited documentation, lack of example, and of course they require time to learn. Um, what people like is they don't need to learn CSS. And then they, they feel secure because there is the compiler. And uh, especially for people coming from like React, the, the idea that everything is included is, is also very good, and, uh, and eventually it's fun. These are the, um, some of the applications that we wrote in this, uh, in this time. Uh, lastly, uh, this is uh, the situation of Elm in Japan. The, the community is quite active. Um, there is also a ginger, maybe some of you know, as a, it, was a, 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 it is a great contributor of a, a lot of packages. He just released a, a, a book in Elm. In Japan, still, books are kind of a big thing. And then there are meetups that I attended a few times. And by the way, if you are interested in uh, Elm and Japan, let me know because we are hiring. And lastly, I was curious about other countries. So I ran a little math on this, uh, the state of Elm of 2018, and I divided the number of uh, respondees by the population. And this is the result. It seems there is something going on here in Norway. <laughs> Thank you very much.